Hey there, how's it going? Today I want to share with you a really easy way you can deploy your web applications on your own private server. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how we can deploy a Next.js application together with like an analytics tool like Umami. Uh, but you can deploy anything. I know, especially now in 2024, a lot of people want to maybe do a little Go application. You know, they want to give Go a go. Don't blame them, right? Uh, so you can do any type of application and deploy it. So I'm going to be using a tool called Docploy. We're going to get our own server on Hetzner and I'll take you from there. I know there's a lot of options out there and it's scary. There is serverless, go with this, go with that. But you know, at the end of the day, tinkering with servers for me personally is super fun. Like you'll get into it and then you're like, try you start understanding more stuff and it's like, oh my God, it all makes sense now. So I think it's just like a net positive for everyone to tinker around with servers. And at the end of the day, the server little folks, you know what they're doing? They're just tinkering with servers. So it is what it is. Okay, so I deployed one of my landing pages. Let me just quickly show you. So Ultimate Next.js, this is running on a five pound uh, VPS. And also on the server, we have a Umami instance running here. Uh, it's under plausible because I tried that out beforehand, but I actually prefer this. So this is running here as well. And the fantastic thing is I can add a bunch of other websites that I can deploy here straight on this one singular VPS. And if I want to, I can increase the size, I can add load balancing and everything to it. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, cool. So how do we get started? Well, you got to pick a VPS, right? Uh, a provider, I should say. So there's a couple options out there. There's Hetzner, if you can get lucky and get into this, I really recommend it. It's bloody like, well, let's look, up, let's look at prices. We're gonna make a server right now. I'll do it in Ashburn here. We'll do Ubuntu and let's just do a shared one. Look at this, how crazy is this? So that's like five pounds for me and you get four gigs of RAM and three CPUs. That's a good deal. Now, don't remember about the other ones, but I'm pretty sure Digital Oceans wasn't as great or Linode. So, but if that's your only choice, definitely go for it. Of course, there might be other like benefits to this. I'm honestly not too caught up with it, but I'm loving Hetzner. Um, I'm gonna stick with this. So I already have one of these, but let's just make a new one. Um, yeah, we'll do a shared CPU. I'll do the seven one for now for fun. Um, we'll leave the public IP, blah, blah, blah. And here, I already have an SSH key attached to this. If you don't know how to do that, it's really simple. You just generate the key and pop it in here. It's pretty much it. Um, but I'll leave a resource down in the description. If not, oh, also drop a subscribe to this channel if you enjoy. Did that light up when I say subscribe, the subscribe button? No? Let me know. Okay, so cool. So firewall, you can leave this off. You can add this after. You know, you don't need to do it from here. You can do it with, um, you know, U UFW straight in Linux. I'll just leave everything like this. I'll call this a testing one because I'll get rid of it after. But let's create this. There we go. Cool. So, to so the tool that we'll be using is called Docploy. Very similar to Coolify if you had any you know, experience with that. But I really like the UI. I like the interface. I like how easy it is to deploy to multiple servers, add the load balancer, do Docs, Docker Swarm. All of that jazz is really nice. It has two-factor authentication as well. So I definitely recommend you keep an eye on this project. Um, so we'll copy this command. So there we go. We got this. So we can copy over the command. I'll just open up my terminal here. I'm starting to move on NeoVim and on Mac, by the way. So I'm going to need to start changing, because I'm still running on Windows here. I need to start changing my setup up, because uh, I don't have any of the NeoVim stuff configured here. But anyway, so all we need to do is SSH in this one, right? So we can see SSH root as the root user at that specific IP address. So there we go. We can hit yes here. And that should be it. We should be in. Let's do a clear here. And from here, of course, you want to do your, you know, create a new user, add the pseudo privileges to him, and then disable the password login and stuff like that. Uh, but let's just copy over the docplo command here and run enter. So this is going to set up Docker for you. It's going to set up Docker Compose, uh, traffic, Nginx, all of that good jazz. And it's just going to give you a public uh, port here that you can just access. So whilst this is loading up here, I'm just going to uh, initialize like an empty empty project. So I, do I have Tmux on this? I don't even know. But let's go here. Let's see. I'll go into, let's do CD videos. I'll just make one here. Let's create MPX 
create next app at I'm gonna do a 4.2.4 has some issues with the new one, so let's just do it there. All right, there we go, and that's done. So as you can see, it just gives you a public IP address here that you can copy and paste over, and we should be in. So here, just make your login. So let's pop that in, pick a password as well. Ah, we should be in the system. We are hackers. You picked me an old guy, thank you very much. So now from here, what we can do is do auto deploy straight from GitHub. So you're getting a really, really nice experience. The first thing we need to do is head over to Git down here and connect your GitHub. So I'll just create a GitHub app here. There we go. I'll give this a name. I'll just do testing here because I'm gonna get rid of this. But let's just, oh, it's already taken, okay. Is that taken? How? Okay, test. No one puts that many, no way that's taken. <gasps> Bro, what is going on? No. Oh, can it be longer than that many characters? Okay, I'm, I'm an idiot. Thank you. Okay, there we go. So we created this. So then we just run install here on it. Perfect. I'll give it all repositories for now. There we go. And it's connected now. So as you can see here, we have the projects panel where we can create services and attach different types of templates and Docker Compose files. We, you can monitor our, all your system's resources here. You have a traffic file system that you can edit as well that keeps it nice and clean. You're also gonna see your Docker deployments here. And there's a bunch, if you wanna do like two-factor authentication as well, you can enable that up here. But yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff and down here you can also attach multiple different servers. Uh, so yeah, fantastic. Okay, let's see how this Next.js application is loading up. Okay, it's done. So we can do cd doc ploy next. So there we go. I just pushed up my code to this Git repository here so we can give this a go. So let's head back here and I'll do a create project here. Let's name this next. I'll do create. There we go. I can add a service. As you can see, you can do databases, you can do a compose file or different templates as well. I'll show you how we can do the template thing as well. But we'll do application for now. I'll do next front end here. Let's create this, pop this open. And here, as you can see now that we have a, the test one connected here, we can just select our repository. So I'll do docploy, the, uh, the one we just put up. And here you can do the build path to slash and then you can choose next specs. The wonderful thing is it's gonna deploy it and when you do a redeploy of this, it's gonna keep that version until the other one goes live and then it just does a quick switcheroo. Just, that's what you wanna see. We love a good switcheroo, don't we? Let's choose the main branch as well. Here you can separate all your branches if you want, save, save, and we are good to go. So I'll show you when we do a git push. Um, yeah, it's gonna redeploy because uh, we'll add the analytics after it. So let's do deploy and boom, beam, boom. If you wanna add environment variables, you can do that here. It's gonna give you a domain here as well. So you can just generate this. Um, for domains, you wanna put this through Cloudflare, okay? So if you, if you have it on Namecheap, what you need to do is go to Cloudflare, take the name servers there and put it into Namecheap. And then from Cloudflare, Pop in your IP address with an A record and just direct it over to your IP. And that should, should be good to go. If you just want to have like test applications, um, just add the domain here, generate one, boom, you're done. You can leave it on port 3000. We can even do a HTTPS certificate and create that. And that should be good to go. So let's have a look. You can also check out the deployment here. That was here. If you go, as you can see, it's running. So if you open this up, you can see everything's loading up. If you wanted to see that kind of how this is doing, you can do htop here in your server. Uh, it's around 50% when it's deploying this, so it's not too bad. I tried to like deploy this and also run other services and it was doing actually pretty fine. So this is gonna stay like this for just a little while whilst this is deploying, but it's pretty, pretty bloody quick actually. Um, there we go, it's generating the pages and that should be good. So. Let's get that link. Get that link ready. 
Let's copy it. So now if we get the link and go there, as you can see, boom, we have our next application running. Awesome job. Okay, so let's add analytics to this as well. So check this out. It's as easy as going to your project. I'm going to create a service. I'm going to do a template. As you can see, they have super base, pocket base, plausible, a bunch uh, that you can use. I like Umami because it's so lightweight. So I'll add this. Uh, it's going to be the default server here. So I'll create it. Let's go here. Let's go to deployments. Also create a URL for this. Oh, it looks like it already did. That's pretty cool. Um, it's still loading actually, so it didn't. I'm lying. There we go, Umami. Let's do deploy. Oh, by the way, I'm really dumb. I just tried to be like, hey, why can I not do the HTTPS here? And then I looked in the settings in the traffic file system. You're not going to have any of these problems if you have a domain. But if you go to settings here and you do traffic and watch logs, uh, as you can see, it errors out. And it says it cannot obtain a certificate for this specific domain because it just cannot issue it for an IP address. OK, you need a domain. So it's like, why is this not working now? It was so easy to do it beforehand. So we'll just go with HTTP for now. Obviously, don't do this. If you want to do it, do it through a domain connected like that through Cloud Failure. Stay protected, kids. OK, so anyway, we deployed the next. We deployed the Umami as well. So I generated a domain for this as well. So, so now here we can just make an account. If it says login here, it's because you need to change uh, the actual password. I think the default was admin and Umami for the password. Yes, OK, guessed it correctly. OK, so we're in here. So you can just go to settings here, add a website. So again, it's going to ask you for a domain here. So I'll just take the HTTP domain from here in our case now. So I'll just go to next font, domains. I'll copy this one over. Pop that sucker in. I'll say next. Paste that domain, hit save, and there we go. That's added there and it's good to go. So now here on the next application, you can go here to the tracking code. And as you can see, it's going to give you this defer here. And the source is going to be the Umami server that we have here. And the data of website ID is going to be our actual ID. So let's head here. We'll add async to this. We'll see a source as well. So that's going to be our source right here. Let's copy that over. Copy, paste that in. And let's go here as well and add the data website ID. And I'll just add that like here. You can also do events and other stuff like that, but we'll just track the views for now. And to make sure that this works, let's just go here. I'll delete everything from the main tag and I'll just add like a H1 that's going to say, hey there. Cool. That's it. Save. Let's push the sucker up. Git add, git commit, woo, and then git push. There we go. So let's head back and see if this works. Um, let's head back over to Docploy. Let's go to next. And as you can see, it's automatically redeploying our application. How cool is that? But we can just get the domain and see. So let's go here to the domain. I'll do a couple of refreshes and see when this loads up. Uh, let's have a look. And there we go. Hey there, look at that, it worked. So now this should also track my views. If I refresh a couple of times here, let's head back to our Umami dashboard. Let's do a refresh here. Do we get page tracking views? We don't. It's probably because it's true HTTP. Let's have a look at the console. Yeah, if, if you'd had HTTPS enabled, this would work. But like, I can show it to you here. All right, so we got 61 views. So if we head over to Ultimate Next.js, let's do a couple of refreshes here, see if that number goes up. One, two, and three. All right, head over here, 61. Let's see, and as you can see, it tracked it for us. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, have a look, check it out. I highly recommend you experimenting with it. I'm gonna be moving all my projects here, you know, I've been loving it. Um, the platform, I'm gonna be hosting it through here. You know what? People say, but well, what if you got 10,000 customers all of a sudden? It's not going to be the case. I'm doing like web dev tutorials. OK, I think I'll be fine with one or two servers. If I do get a spike, I'll just chuck in another server. Until next time, have a good one.